compelled to open. So today's session really fits with the latest trends since it's uh, a very new hotel which will open in six months or so in the middle of next year. It's uh, Barbara's third hotel that she opens. She also opened the Stock Hotel Vienna Stephansdom and the Bibliothek Hotel in Vienna. And we'll tell you a little bit more about our client, about Hyatt as a brand, about the project in Vienna, and we'll not just talk about the hotel itself, but the whole development, um, also the luxury stores around it. And then um, give you also an insight into marketing strategies and things like that. So thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you have to get up very early to prepare your presentation. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about, uh, of course, the park I have now. Uh, we feel very proud to have very soon in the city, and then Hyatt as a brand in general, and then at the end um, about um, a small topic, just a little bit about social media. I think everybody of you, as I just mentioned, is uh, more up to date than me on social media, but I will try to tell you something new. So we'll see. Um, I tried as well to make it not too boring, so I hope I put in a few nice funny pictures, one or two videos, so um, yeah, it will be a nice end of the day for all of us. Um, so, um, for Hyatt in general, um, we were just um, at the university as well um, on the career day and we recognized that um, a lot of people and a lot of young people do not really know the, the Hyatt brand, of course, because it's a US brand and uh, was not in Austria or um, yeah, the Viennese area before. So in Germany we do have five properties um, already, um, but it's really a US company, so uh, more known in the US area, of course. Um, so just a short um, storytelling about, about the brand itself. Um, the first Hyatt Hotel was opened in 1957 and it was uh, bought by the Pritzker family, a very well-known family now as well for a big business family. Um, two brothers started with the first hotel in 1957 and the name was already Hyatt. It was a Hyatt Motel and they just thought, okay, why to change the name? We just take it as it is. So uh, let's say Hyatt and yeah, that was the, the Hyatt start. Um, later on, they then just um, thought, okay, we'd like to, to stay in this hospitality area, we'd like to have hotels, um, first in the US and then later, of course, in Europe. And so it started to get, they get uh, more and more Hyatt hotels. Uh, Ten years later, a Hyatt Regency um, and so on. Then 1980, the first Grand Hyatt was born. Um, 2004. Most of the brands were already here. Uh, 2008, the latest brand, the Anders brand, I will just come to it uh, right now on the next slide, was then the last brand we, uh, we get to all the, the different Hyatt brands. Uh, 2009, um, Hyatt um, went to the public, so we put uh, one point, I think, one five billion uh, to the New York Stock Exchange as well. Most of it still in the still family owned by the Pritzker family. Um, yeah, today we have now 500 properties worldwide in 45 countries and 90,000 employees. So as you can see, a very very big company, a lot of employees, uh, a lot of very happy employees. So for whoever would like to join afterwards, I have a few very nice high dot jobs cards. <laughs> Let me know. Um, these are the different brands now, so I'm not sure maybe somebody has seen uh, traveling a few of the brands, um, of course very US related, so the, the main brands are the Grand Hyatt, the Hyatt Regency, uh, the Park Hyatt, what is really the upscale brand, uh, the Andas, uh, the Andas is a very modern, trendy, uh, young style of hotel, um, and it the name is created from, or should be created, should, the idea behind it was that you get there everything from A to Z, and in the middle they thought, okay, Anders will fill the world very nice. So that's the uh, idea behind it. Hyatt Places and Hyatt Houses um, are most in the US. We are opening now a Hyatt uh, house in Amsterdam, 
at the airport area with uh, next year, and there are more the low budget hotels. Um, yeah, and of course, just the short idea behind it why why we why we did this recommendation is all the other hotel brands. Um, of course, there was done a big survey all around the world. Uh, we tried to get out what is the need of. Is of all the people traveling, uh, what other brands they like to visit, what is what they are looking for, um, and finally, or especially what is of course important now for Vienna, um, what what we were looking for was a park hired in Vienna. So I've just seen as well a few questions. I hope I can cover them now. Um, why a park hired in in Vienna? Um, of course, it's a main city. Um, the development of all this golden quarter, I will just talk about it a little bit later as well, um, is a very upscale luxury um, area in the city now. So, um, of course, as well with the other very international hotel brands as Kempinski and Ritz Carlton, for example, what was as well mentioned uh, in the questions, um, the city gets very international as well. So, it's, um, yeah, we try always to see it, of course, from the positive side. So. Um, all of the brands are bringing new people, new clients to the city, so it's as well very, very positive for the city. Um, and of course, this golden quarter, this very upscale area in the city, needs to have a park hired. Park hired, these are the words, all the travelers connect with the brand park hired. So, like luxury, exclusive, very elegant, um, service is a big word, so um, yeah, sophisticated. We always try to get main words covering this brand and uh, finally then of course the location um, and then it could be all, only a park hire what uh, we are looking for in the city um, yeah enriching sophisticated uncommon these are the words uh, we, we are connecting with this brand um, why the segmentation as i mentioned before um, of course, we need to have a differentiation in brands for different travelers. So not everybody is look, looking for a um, luxury stay uh, with the family. Some of them are looking more for a business stay, for a meeting. So it, they would go more for a high regency or for a long staying uh, period for about one to three months. Then they will go for a Hyatt house. So, um, as well the, the experience the guests are looking for are changing and that's the reason why there are different brands. Um, and of course providing a unique experience depending on which brand you're choosing. Um, yeah, and of course this study, it's an ongoing process. So um, this is something we are doing on and on uh, to stay up to date, is to understand what the clients need. So what is the what is the, the, the reason why the client then choosing, for example, the park hires? And um, as well, what are the opportunities we, we still have to, to add to our services or to um, the environment you find them in the, in the hotel itself? And uh, what is as well very um, interesting and important is that um, you have also to choose the brand um, to uh, observing what is uh, what is the final guest you're looking for. So, is it more for leisure or is it more for the business traveler? Um, of course, you can cover or try to cover both. Then you have, for example, rooms and a very nice meeting space as well. So, as well for which occasion guests are coming to the city or then to the hotel. Um, the summary of, of the Park Hyatt, so of our brand. Um, what guests we will expect in the city, um, they are um, willing to pay for the quality experience, uh, but are not interested in the old luxuries, so uh, they still are looking for some new elements, some modern equipment, of course the newest technical equipment in the hotel rooms, but as well a fancy new cuisine in the restaurants, uh, fancy bars, nice cool cocktails, so really a nice, very new and modern and trendy um, surrounding in a very luxury hotel area, of course. Um, they want a classic, they can trust, uh, but want to feel like they are having an experience different from everyone else. So um, a Park Hyatt should also be a location or a hotel where, for example, very important rich people are coming with their family because they feel cozy, they feel at home, 
they trust the brand, they trust the people, they are working in this hotel. Um, so it's not only to go to the hotel to be in a park hire, but as well to feel really at home. Um, and of course the location, as I mentioned, now with the Golden Quarter, the top location, I would say, in the city. Um, yes, and then I thought, why not to put in some nice guys? So these are the guests uh, we are expecting at our park hive in Vienna. Um, I thought for the guys, Kate Moss would be nice as well. So um, these are very popular, of course, and rich people. Uh, but if they're traveling, they try to have as well an area for themselves. So to have a nice surrounding where they feel at home, um, where they get some good food, some good drinks, um, and still have the luxury service and the service they expect, of course, for what they are. Um, and the slide was not big enough. I thought Patrick Dempsey should be in as well. So <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that would be uh, some additional people we are expecting. Uh, of course, serious people as Kate Middleton as well with their family, for example. So just to have some VIPs we are looking for. Yeah, and then uh, I just would like to come a little bit more in detail about the park in Indiana now. So um, I can say my baby. Uh, I think I will uh, stay a long time the next month in the hotel, um, a lot of hours. But it will be really a very nice project. And I have now some new pictures for you as well. They are not officially. So there are some renderings, computer animated picture. But this is how the hotel will look um, in the future, hopefully. Um, I think one question was as well that um, the building is, was owned 2008 already by the owner's company, so the Signa Holding. Um, René Benko is a very popular face, I think, and maybe uh, familiar with more of you. Um, as you remember, there was a big fire, I think, 2010 in the building, so a big or a huge part of the hotel was unfortunately destroyed, and so the reconstruction and all the rebuilding had to start again. So um, yeah, you can say that really everything started with 2010 again. Uh, we had as well a mock-up room uh, before, so um, like a test room from 2009 already, um, which was destroyed as well. So there are two different pictures in the, um, in the next slides, which are already which were done before the fire came. So that's the reason why it's taking now so long and we hopefully, or the opening is now with June 1st planned. So next year, June 1st, 2014. Um, in total, we will have 143 rooms, um, 35 suites in this, um, one whole floor, so 700 square meters meeting space um, with all the pre-function area would be like, um, I would say 800 square meters in total. All of them with daylight. So on the second floor, um, a big ballroom, a very nice ballroom for uh, bigger functions or private dining or nice private parties. Um, of course, some outlets, so a very nice restaurant in the middle of the hotel, um, a bar area with, um, as soon as we get all the plants, with a nice outside area as well, in the pedestrian area. So. Um, there would be a very nice outside area as well, um, a lobby lounge, a whiskey and a cigar lounge um, inside the hotel um, and a very big and nice spa area on um, minus one and minus two together with a swimming pool. So um, really 15, it would be like 15 to 5 meters I think, so really for swimming. Um, steam bath, sauna, vitality showers, treatment rooms as well for couples. So a very nice spa area as well, not only for hotel guests, but for the locals as well. And now I have just a few slides for you to get an impression uh, of, the, of the hotel area. So this is the lobby area coming into from Amhof, so really from the, the main place in front of the hotel. Uh, straight ahead is then the restaurant area. And then you have the separate areas to the left, to the rooms to the right to the restaurant. Um, this is now one of the um, king rooms, so one of the smallest rooms. Um, the rooms starting from about 40 square meters, so will be the biggest rooms in the city um, for the moment. So I hope it will stay as long <laughs> um, 
as we can with the uh, biggest rooms in the city. Very high ceilings due to the, um, of course, the historical building. Um, so the ceilings are starting from almost three meters up to 420. Um, and yeah, two different styles. This is one of the, of the um, darker, uh, darker style of the room, uh, depending on the size and of the um, ceiling height. Um, we'll see maybe on the next slide. This is, for example, a twin room. Uh, here on the side, you can see this uh, shell artwork, what is a, a blown up brochure we used, or we do have a cooperation with the um, local MAC. So, um, it, maybe just as a short background, at the same time, the um, new park height in New York will open, so as well with uh, June 1st. And we have a cooperation with the Museum of Modern Art in New York and here in uh, Vienna because they are sharing the licenses for some um, artworks from the uh, Wiener Werkstätte. And this is one of it. Um, that's a blow-up version of the of an old historical brochure. And you will find a lot of this artwork in the whole uh, hotel. So we try to use really artwork only from local artists and from local museums. Um, this is the um, old cashier room from the, from the building. Um, and then finally, it will look like this, I hope. Um, at the moment, it looks a little bit, still a little, a little bit different. Um, but this would be the old, uh, old day dining restaurant. So for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, uh, we will have live cooking stations on the side. Um, and at the end as well, a private dining room. And uh, the cuisine will be very, so we are not looking for a star, star Michelin um, chef inside, but really for a very nice cuisine, international kitchen, um, but with local ingredients, of course, so um, a nice restaurant where all of you can go as well, of course, for the ladies maybe with a man who is paying. So. <laughs> uh, the bar area. Um, the masculine part, as we say, uh, we will have as well the lobby lounge, which will be more a little bit lighter, and the feminine part of the bar area, this would be more the masculine bar, uh, connected to the whiskey and the cigar lounge. Um, here in the corner, you can see again the, the artworks, um, and as well, pieces of the marble are used in all of the rooms. So you have really same materials reflected in different areas in the hotel. Uh, the ballroom, now we will set up for a um, city dinner. Um, daylight, uh, so it's in the, in the middle of, of the hotel, on the second floor. Um, the original um, ceiling, um, so the reconstruction of it, um, and uh, for maximum 200 persons then finally. Um, then here one of the um, smaller boardrooms for starting from 6 to about 30-40 people. So for smaller, uh, nice boardroom uh, or board meetings up to bigger um, conferences than projects in the boardroom. Um, and then here one of our treatment rooms, uh, this one the one for the, for the couples, um, where we will then offer finally um, treatments, massages and these things. Um, the pool area as well, so this is nothing what is <laughs> went out to the public at one, but it's already um, officially uh, confirmed. The spa will be called Arani Spa. Arani is the um, Hungarian word for gold, and um, as it fits very well to the golden quarter and to all the rich feeling in the spa area as well, we will try to have the pool inlay. Uh, done as well with gold, so you get the feeling that you're swimming in gold, like double the duck, for example. So you can imagine like this. Uh, we hope it will finally work out. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah. At the team gold, gold. So we're coming to the golden quarter. So the surrounding of the hotel, and um, as I think most everybody has seen already, the the new developed quarter in the city. Uh, maybe just one historical point behind it, what uh, I have learned as well, um, is that the first very luxury area in the city was always the Golden U. I learned that uh, very new as well, and that was the Kärntnerstraße, the Graben and the Kolmer. So this was the area 
um, where all the luxury, the expensive shops and all the real estates were placed at the beginning and that was the, um, as well the reason why then the owners from the, uh, from the Golden Quarter uh, buildings um, thought to add then the Golden Quarter to this Golden U. So finally the area you can see there now. So our hotel between Arhof, Bogenergasse, Salzergasse and of course the extension of the Tuchlauben. And this should really be the extended area to the Golden U and extend this very luxury area to the heart of the city. Um, yeah, just to the Golden Quarter, a short description. Um, what I had not mentioned at the beginning is that um, our building was at the beginning or was built 1930 to 1915. Uh, was from the beginning on a headquarter always for a, a bank. Uh, first of the Iskont Bank, which was a very old traditional um, Czech-Austrian combination um, of an international bank and then later the uh, Bank Austria, the headquarters of the Bank Austria, and then 2008 um, owned by the Signer, and then as well uh, it started to get changed and reconstructed to the, to the hotel. Uh, finally, the, the figures to the Golden Quarter. We have now then finally the 18 shops there. So um, a lot of the shops have opened already. A few shops will open with, uh, with or a little bit before our hotel. So I think uh, Prada is still not opened. Uh, Church uh, Miu Miu is open already. Chanel will open. Um, we have a lot of office, new office space. And for example, the building where the new flagship store Louis Vuitton is. There are as well apartments um, uh, over it, so I think all of them are sold already, or one or two are still left, but uh, otherwise as well this area is, uh, yeah, here just a short uh, surrounding map to see that it's of course in the heart of the city center. Um, and the brands, what I mentioned already, so a lot of them have opened already. Uh, Prada will open church, uh, seven for all mankind. Um, and then the front area, Louis Vuitton, Valentino, Brioni, Cavalli, and these things are open um, already. And then I'm just uh, finally, after the, all these reconstructions, uh, we hope that it will all look like this. Yeah, and I think uh, that was the short overview of this of the heart of the city uh, now, the new Golden Quarter. Um, I have just at the end a few points or something I just want to, to talk about. Um, what of course makes a little bit the difference to, or what is important, as we do have now a lot of luxury hotels in the city. So of course all of the uh, brands you will find or you can find now are very luxury, they have a great interior design, they have uh, very luxury materials used inside. Um, but what is really, I think the most important thing is of course the stuff. This is what the people are talking about, this is what they remember. Um, so what finally is the thing all of us have to work on, or what is our job as well in sales and marketing, in public relations, um, in communications, in all these e-commerce areas well is um, of course, social media, emotions, stories, things, things the staff is creating inside. So of course, it's important to have uh, done a lot of work before with um, newsletters, preparing a nice website to make everything very attractive. But finally, to be sure that people are coming back and that they are you know, talking about the brand and booking it as well in other uh, parts of the world is really the stuff inside. and. Uh, how, how they remember the brand and their space. Um, so, in general, the world of social. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I think everybody of you, anyway, is very, very up to date with all the social things. So, uh, sharing pictures, uh, I don't know, you are in a restaurant, you think, okay, for example, as a staff member, you think, okay, you're serving now a very nice dish. Um, at the end, you turn around and the dish is already uh, on the internet and uh, with some comments and likes and don't likes and I don't know what. Um, so sharing is the new word of mouth. 
Um, everything is transparent, what uh, is good if you know how to use it and how to work with it. Of course, on the other side, it could be uh, a big challenge because uh, if you make a mistake, everybody will know it immediately. And uh, yeah, and then of course, it's not that you just you don't, I don't know, forget to bring this one beer, but then, for example, 32 friends will know it about it. So. Um, a very important thing we all of us have always rethink and uh, see what we can or how we can improve these areas. Uh, yeah, how we like to say the generation Y. So, um, what I think all of the older people are very good in, and what uh, I learned as well the last years is that we have a lot of wonderful and super action plans and strategic plans and uh, budget plans and um, yeah. A lot of good plans. Uh, finally, nobody's taking care because uh, what is really important is that you just have ideas and you just do it, and that's what the new generation is doing more as the oldest, I would say. So, um, this is the step I think all of us need to go and to make uh, just to, yeah, not to be too afraid to work maybe sometimes without a plan or without a good plan, so just to post things try to, to be up to date and to catch all these new things. Um, I have now just put in, we, we do have with Hyatt as well, three or four times a year, um, meetings, international meetings, where we meet um, external partners, so different companies, not only from the hospitality, hospitality um, area, to see what they are doing, what, what we maybe can use in our company. Um, or they're doing absolutely something else, so maybe sometimes marketing or sales as well, but for example, Avato, um, um, the a big part of the Bertelsmann Group, what is at the end or started at the beginning with a bookstore, um, they are really, I was very impressed how, how they motivating people, how they are working, they have a whole floor in their office uh, with um, Different different corners where people can meet just to have ideas. They have like uh, everywhere whiteboards where somebody passing by and going for a coffee can just put on an idea just coming up. So very creative people there, and I learned there that uh, it's not about um, yourself to being creative because I think I'm not a very creative person, how I mentioned uh, before. But it's really the environment what makes you creative. So everybody of us can have you know. Uh, new ideas. We just need to have, yeah, some some nice surroundings uh, and a place to fail. That's important as well. So um, it's better to have 50 tries and then at the end one super idea what works out. As at the end, uh, yeah, one good idea and at the end it will not work as well. So uh, that's their strategy. Just doing things, just having ideas, and just deciding to try something new. And if it will not work, they will not make it two days later. And if it will work, then it was a good idea. Um, and they have as well, that's the leading sentence of the company from Henry Ford. If I had asked people what they wanted at the time there, of course, they would have said faster horses. And I think that's a very nice sentence because, uh, of course, everybody wanted to be faster. Nobody thought about um, a car but about faster horses, so I think that's nice to show how important it is to think a little bit um, outside the box. Um, these are just impressions from their offices, so as you can see it's really like this, I thought at the beginning it's a, you know, a story nobody will invest in some, such an area, but it's really like this. Uh, so you have areas you can just sit down and sit there two hours and be creative, so, and you get money for that, so, <laughs> so very nice thing. Uh, and at the end, you see it's a very, very um, popular company. They have a lot of areas now working on because of these new creative ideas. They are not only a normal bookstore or just in this area, they are doing marketing, IT, um, you see public affairs, media as well. So they are really in all these different areas just because they always thought to get a step more and more outside in another area of their company or current current working area. Um, and next very good example is uh, My Little Paris, uh, a very nice small company in uh, France. 
um, they started with just two girls at the beginning and they had a very nice idea, they thought, okay, um, we have now a very nice idea, we will just make a nice, we will just have a walk in the city and um, see what there is new, maybe we can then share it, what of course now at the moment is what you have to do with some friends and uh, then we will see how the feedback is. Um, now, after I think it's now five years later, they have a lot of employees um, all over the world. Um, as you can see as well, they have creative meetings, they meet every day in the morning, they have video conferences with girls and women around the world to see what's new um, all over the world. Um, they, For example, what is as well nice there, I think, is that they uh, pay books to the employee, so you can buy there as an employee as much books as you like, and they pay for all of the books uh, to give you the opportunity to be creative. Um, and here is just the overview of how it started. So they started in 2004, so it's now um, nine years, uh, with just a newsletter to 50 friends. Um, and now at the end, they have one million subscribers. It's really just an online, online site where they're created some nice stories for women, uh, talking about hotspots in the city, about uh, shopping points in the city. Um, then they had a new idea, they thought, okay, it would be nice to send out small present boxes to women, so let us make uh, present boxes for the women, they pay like 10 euros for it. At the end, they are making so much money with all of these very nice new ideas nobody had before of them. Um, that they have now 100 million subscribers, as well mailings they are sending out. You have 50% uh, opening rate, what is a uh, huge one because of course everybody of us is getting uh, a lot of newsletters and emails, and normally they are deleted, and as well 12% click-through rate. So 50% uh, is like 12% as well, five, um, five to ten times more than a new normal newsletter. Normally if you get a newsletter, you do not click through the different areas. Um, and they have in all this time never paid a euro for any of, of advertisement. So they made really now finally all this money without any effort, without any investment, um, just because they were creative and they tried to be a step ahead of all the others. So that's just an overview, 95% uh, of women, uh, 25 to 40 year old, very high income and um, at the end um, of course, a lot of companies recognize how important this company is in the French-speaking area and uh, try, of course, to get a cooperation with them and uh, try to get some of their clients and database because, of course, 25 to 40 years old women with a high income have most of the time a man behind you or next to them with a high income or a family, so they're traveling, they need to buy some things. And um, I will just come to it uh, at the next slide um, as well higher then finally try to um, be able to make something with them together. Um, anyway, this is a leading sentence of this My Little Paris company, what is, I think, what fits for all, all of the companies. We need more than campaigns, we need stories. And for that, I just want to show you a short video. I hope the link is now live, right? Um, this is a short video uh, from uh, Walt Disney. It's a private video done from a, from a family and uh, Walt Disney used it then globally um, as an advertisement because it is a very emotional story and after that uh, they have an increase in clicks and in visits to Walt Disney as not before with a normal paid advertisement. So I hope it will work now. It's just a short... Then I will do it another way. My head is not working.
Pajamas. What kind are those? market for us as a brand. Um, we created a competition on this site where we said, okay, um, please put, uh, put a picture online with the best view you have right now at the moment or from your hotel room if you're traveling, if you're a businesswoman or uh, maybe from your ap home apartment if you see something very nice opposite of you. And um, in the middle of all these pictures, unfortunately I have to say it, it's uh, we paid for it, of course, so we had to put in pictures from Hyatt. Um, this looks finally then, of course, now I have just uh, filtered out the Hyatt pictures, but we had then in the middle of all these, of all these views, um, some of Hyatt uh, views from Hyatt hotels. And of course, the thing is that it was a part of the story and the people really clicked on these pictures and then through clicking on these pictures they get on the website and we had really a very very positive feedback at the beginning we thought okay what yeah what what is it about i mean is it really necessary to make such a competition and will somebody really pay attention to the hotels but they, at the end they were really interested for the pictures other women shared on this website that it was really a big success and uh, this is just one idea we had, what is not so usual, I would say. Um, but of course, there are a lot of other ideas. 
Um, but um, the Figaro, for example, another company on the French market, uh, I just want to show you with these slides now how, how big the increase is in all of these digital market things or social media. Um, you see here, for example, the increase, because I just got the figures from the Figaro, from 2005 to 2013 in employees working in the digital department. So at the beginning, and it's not really so long ago, it's like uh, eight years now, they had only 80 people working on a website, I would say, finally. And now 2013, 1,200 of 1,500 employees are working on the digital side. So it's not really about the print thing. And I mean, the Figaro is a print uh, daily newspaper. Um, they had really now spread around all the different devices. So um, this is what, of course, is what a hotel as, as Hyatt has to work with. So we have to be present on all these different devices. We have to be, there has to be an easy access on smartphones, on the iPad. It has to be very, you know, synthetic to use it. Um, not only the smartphone, but the iPad, and then the desktop in work, but as well laptops. Um, so there is a very, very big change in as well the use with all this media. Um, as you can see as well, an increase of now 178 uh, percent in um, figures to get just a feeling. Um, I have figures here as well where you can see that um, as well the increase from just in one year, uh, the use of, for example, videos like the video we have seen now, um, increased from uh, 650,000 a month to 7 million um, a month people in, uh, just in on the French market, so the figures are from the Figaro just on the French market, uh, watching videos and watching advertising videos or, you know, experiences people are posting on YouTube, for example. Uh, so really a very big increase as well on the YouTube channel area. Um, and this is the, the final point I would like them to come to, is what, what is Hyatt doing or trying to do with all this um, online media? Um, not only, as I mentioned, for example, um, of course, with some competitions or social media work we're trying to do with partners. Um, a big thing is, of course, all the um, online reviews we're getting from guests through, for example, TripAdvisor, but not only from TripAdvisor, as well from booking machines, online booking machines, travel agents, um, feedback you're getting directly to your own page, um, or then um, feedback we see for example, on the competition sites, what is as well very important for us to see what people are mentioning or, or uh, noting about the competition to see, okay, what we can maybe make better. Um, so we created, and it's a work of uh, almost five years now, the, this text analytics or new brand analytics system in BA code, very short. Um, and this is a new system that uh, was created to uh, put together all this data we can find online, so all these postings for us as a hotel or as a hotel brand to better understand uh, what clients do not like about our hotel, um, what we can maybe do better. Uh, these are just some questions and some figures we, we have to note out for ourselves. So um, to see, okay, we are getting 70 postings every minute through TripAdvisor from Hyatt Worldwide. We had just this year 41,000 TripAdvisor <coughs> postings until end of September. So you can imagine a lot of uh, comments we have as well to answer. So all of the hotels have to answer, of course, these TripAdvisor uh, comments. Um, and then what, what I mentioned before that, of course, guests are more talking about the stuff as, uh, as for example, I don't know, the furniture or, um, I don't know, a lamp you would find or whatever. So it's really always this emotional thing, of course. Um, stories they can remember, feelings they had, maybe they have not felt very comfortable because of, uh, yeah, could be, of course, because of the kitchen in the restaurant, I don't know, but, uh, um, yeah, and then just what, what, what is what we have, what we like to do or what we would like to do with all this data. Um, and we created a system as well to be able, first of all, to answer from one to all over the different, uh, the different systems. Um, and as well, the system is, what is new about it is that it's um, as well 
changing the languages. So I mean, at the moment, if you have comments on TripAdvisor, you always have it in the original uh, language. You can change English and German, but if you have, for example, Russian or Japanese or anyway, Asian guests, uh, you will always have the original language there, and then it's difficult as well for other people to, to if they are reading these comments, to see what is in the comments. So this tool is, as soon as this comment is done about our hotel, for example, it will be uh, changed to English and will, put, will be put next to the, for example, Japanese or Russian language. I hope this is to understand. <laughs> so a very complicated system. Um, this is just what I mentioned, uh, that we just wanted to be part of all these social things and just um, have the opportunity to answer to all these online comments that are coming uh, into our hotel. Um, and of course to use it to increase the satisfaction and to understand the needs and uh, what we can maybe change. Um, and this is what I mentioned just for you to see. So we are collecting all the data. HiSET is the, um, the Hyatt um, online satisfaction survey. So the guest satisfaction survey we are sending out to the guests after uh, departure. But as well, all the other um, comments uh, that you can post online are collected. The process is that all the, the technical team behind it. There is uh, in US a team working for the whole world of course with computer systems behind it, but they are filtering this for us. Um, and then as well the review side, what I mentioned, like for example, as you can see here now, of course the, the on, all the online uh, tools you can use, but then as well social networks like Twitters, people post during their stay or after they stay. Uh, there is as well like a mistake system in hotels during the guest stay. I don't know if somebody knows it, but if people are staying in a hotel and have travels or preferences in a hotel, there is a system in the hotel um, which is collecting all this information. So you get as well in the system all these notes to a guest profile. So it's uh, as well collecting the data into the guest profile. So really trying to get all this, all this information and put it to one guest and as well for us to have one very good professional feedback to work with. I think that's, that's something very important and um, a big point because normally in a hotel you have like every day a morning briefing where you talk about small mistakes that happened or something that was strange or not working. But at the end it's good to have like one guest profile to see, ah, okay, from the beginning, from the booking process he had troubles to book the room, then he get the wrong room, then he, I don't know, had troubles with the room service uh, booking or uh, room service order and then at the end after that of course he put a comment on TripAdvisor that was not very nice. So you can really deal from the beginning to the end with all this information. Um, as well from the comp competition, so the, the system is filtering all the feedback from the competition, of course not their own hotel feedback but from TripAdvisor comments for example or the other social medias. Um, and then as well from the competition you see what maybe the competition is making better. That's as well very important for us to see, okay, the rooms, are they really more comfortable? Is it more about, for example, spa facilities or the staff? Um, and I think with this system we have a good overview, of course, this is an ongoing process. Um, this is now active in US and it's coming with next year to the European areas, so to the European hotels as well. Um, and then you get like this word cloud where you can really see what are the most positive or negative words. Um, and I would say a system I'm very thankful to because it's really very, very difficult to handle all this social work and all social postings. Um, this is just a, an additional slide to see as well that um, the number just in one month increased 2% of use just for high pages uh, in use of tablet and smartphone so you can see that people are more and more working with all these mobile devices so it's really like they are going out of the hotel and posting the comments so and that's just in one month so i mean there is such a big increase still in process uh, that uh, you really have to handle all those things um yeah then youtube as i as i just shown you the video before um, Hyde is as well working with YouTube or trying to put sometimes a video there to be present. 
and here just